Hello everyone, welcome to our video on Project 2010. I am Densan Tutar from Istanbul Technical University. I will present you the aims, concept and results of Project 2010. First of all, the motivation of the project was to develop a molecular visualization tool that is lightweight and can be used in many popular platforms. The end product was also intended to be easily used from the terminal and provide a practical export of data for some other tools. We have used Python 3 programming language and OpenGL programming interface to provide cross-platform functionality. OpenGL is a widely used API that is created for rendering 2D and 3D vector graphics. The utilization of GPU is provided by adequate usage of PyOpenGL and other OpenGL dependent libraries. OpenGL has its own rendering pipeline and provides functions to give the user control of various steps. This rendering pipeline starts with a list of vertices, then the visualization primitives are generated from those. Those are later processed to obtain fragments and lastly turned into pixels to be displayed. All of this pipeline is particularly suitable to be handled in the GPU. GPU parallelism is provided implicitly by OpenGL and libraries we use that are dependent on it. Parallelization is used to deal with potential performance bottlenecks in the process of obtaining a list of vertices from the data. Parallelization is one of the most important aspects of high performance computing. Parallelization at the level of CPU cores and computing resources other than GPU was one of the main goals of this project. An important approach to parallelized computation is multiprocessing. In this approach, many processes are started to run in parallel. The operating system treats each process roughly like an independent program and assigns them separate resources. They often communicate via message passing interface or an alternative tool. This approach is more suitable for muscular parallel computations that span many nodes. We did not use this approach because our task is usually not that massive and expected to be done within a single node. Our preferred parallelization strategy is called shared memory approach. In this approach, two or more threads run in parallel. Maybe the most important difference of a thread from a process is that they share some of the computational resources. Actually, the name shared memory implies that they can access the same memory segments in same or similar ways. That causes an important class of errors to arise, called race conditions. Race conditions are known to be cynic errors, and many methods are developed to deal with them. One of the important mechanisms developed to evade race conditions is locks. Locks basically restrain a part of data from being accessed by other threads when one thread is working on it. Using OpenMP and C for example, locks are often employed to lock a specific part of the data so other threads can work on other parts of the data. In Python, that concept works a bit different. Python uses the global interpreter lock mechanism that restrains all the threads from accessing the whole shared memory except one. This mechanism reduces the number of active threads at any given time to one. That causes an ineffective threading for CPU-bound applications. But Python threading still allows us to overlap data I.O. and computation. So threading is still valuable in Python, at least for I.O.-bound applications. On the other hand, GIL does not prevent all potential causes of errors due to threading. The OS can switch between threads at any time, and additional measures should be taken to prevent errors in certain situations. We have implemented a bounded semaphore, which is basically a counter variable that is incremented or decremented when a thread reaches a critical part of the code. Other threads wait for that thread to decrement the value of the semaphore to enter this critical region. This way, unexpected results are avoided. We could not reach some of our important goals to be honest. The extent of the project happened to be considerably smaller than we first planned. Still, we achieved some of the main targets. The project has a working visualization pipeline, thread parallelism for overlapping I.O. with computation by reading data in chunks and doing pre-rendering computations in parallel, can transfer the rendering workload to GPU when possible, and contains the most basic functionalities such as zoom and rotation. Further development of the visualization tool should no doubt aim to satisfy the unsatisfied needs. The resulting program is mostly incomplete without reaching those goals. Also, adapting for future developments can be crucial. For example, there is intense efforts in the Python community to replace the global interpreter lock with any mechanism that provides better multi-threading capabilities without reducing single-thread application performance. 
If it can be done, it may be beneficial for this project like many others. Thanks to all Paris Equip for wonderful organization of Summer of HPC. Also, special thanks to our mentors for their extremely valuable help and support. The project would not reach even this level without them. And of course, thank you 